I think that the choice of the language that you use when you're talking about all of your activities really says a lot about who you are. I think um, business is full of military analogies. Um, you hear things, I mean even titles like chief executive officer, you use words like officer. People talk about executing a plan. People talk about deadlines. Um, I, I think language is extremely powerful and, and the metaphors that I prefer to use are family ones. Danone is a fascinating company because Danone's been on a purpose journey for many, many years. But in the sort of 20 years since I've joined, uh, we've become more focused on health um, and, and, the, and the, the sort of the CEO after that original one uh, redefined the mission as uh, one to bring health through food to as many people as possible. We've sold businesses that weren't kind of consistent with that mission. We've bought businesses that are just like the latest one that we've bought in the United States called White Wave. So we've kind of been refining the purpose journey to be more health oriented uh, and to make sure that our portfolio and our behavior all line up together. With the company, you've worked in leadership positions all over the world, right? You've worked in the UK, France, New Zealand, China. What have you learned in that international journey? So I think that uh, moving from country to country is maybe the most important thing that I've done in my career because what I've learned is that nothing is absolute and nothing is, is clearly right or wrong. I think I've learned to listen really well because when you move into a new country, the realization that the paradigm that you bring is not the paradigm of the people that you're working with it comes home pretty quickly and so listening carefully to how people put things what people don't say has become a really important part of my leadership style there are two major issues that business needs to address when it comes to women and the first is maternity um, I, I think that uh, an, an appropriate level of paid maternity leave is and should be a right. And Danone made a, a commitment earlier this year to give 18 weeks paid leave across the world by 2020. Uh, we already have it here in, in the US. What's important to note though is that you can't just do the policy thing. You need to do the education as well because otherwise it can backfire. If you're giving 18 weeks of, 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 of fully paid leave and uh, you haven't got the culture in your organization that welcomes women, actually it, it, can, it can work in the reverse. But I think maternity is a really important first step. I think the second thing is mobility. You know, one of the, one of the big challenges for women, uh, particularly at senior levels, is, is that you know you need to move around. And I think businesses, particularly now in the world of much more impressive video conferencing facilities and much more uh, appropriate technology, uh, need to be more thoughtful about the way they you know, force, re need, you know, require women to, to move around the world. I grew up in South Africa, which was a challenging time. Uh, those days in South Africa were, were, were interesting time. And I think I, I was really conscious of how isolated that country was. Um, and I became really, really curious about the rest of the world. I was really hungry to see what the rest of the world was like because it was pretty much shut off. You know, we didn't get television in South Africa until 1976. So as a young child, I didn't <clears throat> really know what was going on in the rest of the world. So I was very hungry. And uh, I, uh, in my early 20s, I went backpacking because I was just desperate to find out what the rest of the world thought and how they operated. And I intended to go back after a year, but I never did. I just carried on going. And so I've basically been on the move ever since. So what are your words of wisdom for millennial women out there who want to be you, right? I mean, what would you tell your 20-year-old self? What I would tell my 20-year-old self is Get experience at different altitudes. So in all of the years that I've been in business, this is the subject that I think is the most powerful. There are, very, there are lots of people who are really good down at the ground. Hands, you know, roll their sleeves up, get things done. There are lots of people who are very good at high level, strategic, can picture long-term goals, so on. Very few people can do both, and very few people can move up and down. And I would tell my 20 year old self, get experience at all levels, work out where you like it, where you don't like it, where you're most at ease, where you're most under pressure, and work out what it takes to move up and down. 
And I think the second thing that I would tell my 20 year old self is really to learn to listen. Because when I was young, I was really keen to prove myself and I was so determined to, to have something interesting to say. And it took me a long time to realize just how fascinating everybody else is. And it's a skill that is still very rare. Everybody knows it intellectually, but it's rare to be super curious. Lorna Davis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I loved listening to you. Thank you. <laughs>